We'll call this meeting of the Yuma Union High School District number 70 to order. If you'll all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence, Mr. Laura will lead us. Thank you, you may be seated. Thank you all for attending today. Uh, many of you didn't have a choice and we understand that, so thank you. Um, board member reports, board members may have a discussion about conferences, visitations, legislation, special recognition, donations, et cetera. Does any board member have anything they would like to? I will, we went to, Miss Mellon and I were at the dedication at the Carver Park for the uh, track <laughs> and <laughs> Miss Mellon, it, it, was, it was wonderful. Mr. Fritz did a marvelous job. Uh, Miss Mellon represented the board and spoke and did a marvelous job and it was uh, very well attended and uh, uh, we're very pleased to have been able to dedicate that racetrack, so. Yes, thank you, that seems like forever ago. <laughs> But it was re a really nice um, ceremony and, and just to hear from all his students and people that traveled um, all ac from ac across the country to come and, and to thank um, Coach McLeod. And it was really um, very touching and you could just see how he has impacted their lives in so many ways, just even um, beyond coaching, but in life and life skills. And, and so that was really inspirational. So I was honored to, to be a part of that, so thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you, we'll move on. <laughs> Superintendent's report, uh, Mrs. Thompson. Thank you, President Townsend and governing board members. First on 2.2.1, I'd like to ask uh, sup Associate Superintendent Lisa Anderson to share about our summer learning options. Thank you. So next Friday ends the 2021 school year, but we are ready um, to continue with learning throughout the summer. All six Yuma Union High School District campuses will be offering in-person relearning or enrichment opportunities from June 1st through the 18th, 745 till 1245, and that will include breakfast and lunch and transportation. In addition, for students who want to continue summer learning virtually, they'll be able to enroll in the Yuma Online Distance Ac Academy, also known as Yoda. And then lastly, we have an enrichment opportunity through our partner Arizona Western College. They are offering three short-term summer school sessions for Yuma Union students at no cost. And, and actually all of our summer programs are at no cost to the students. Any interested students need to reach out to their school counselor. Additional information is also available on the Yuma Union High School District website. So we're excited for a, a new summer learning program for our students. Thank you. Um, next, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. Ms. Thompson, a comment or a question. Um, in one of your reports, you noted that uh, the very large number of teachers that had uh, responded saying that they would be willing to teach this summer. Could you sure. expand on that? Because that was a very impressive number of our teachers. Thank you, thank you for that um, comment and question. Um, you know, we were really worried about summer learning, um, especially with uh, the observation that kids have maybe not had the full experience this year for an academic experience. <laughs> and um, just really worried at would we even have the instructors? And I've been doing this a while, I think about 22 years that I've been associated with specifically summer school, and, and we have never had so many teachers reach out and actually apply uh, to teach in a summer learning experience as we have this year. At last I heard it was 98 instructors, and I don't know if we- uh, 111. 111. So. Yes, uh, teachers, of course, are tired. You know, I think the globe is exhausted. Um, but Yuma Union High School District teachers are completely dedicated and committed to their students. Uh, because we have so many teachers interested, we believe we can um, certainly reduce class sizes and keep things a, a little uh, 
definitely a smaller room setting, but it really speaks to the dedication and commitment of our teachers in this district. And um, that is not the norm everywhere. So you have uh, some pretty high performing principals in the room tonight as well, and their leadership has definitely um, been shining and their teachers are ready to continue in summer. Thank you. Reflecting on this amazing year, exceptional year, uh, item 2.2.2 .2 is what a year in YUHSD, and I'd like to turn that over to Associate Superintendent Tim Brianza. Thank you. For the past many, many years, decades in fact, we've had students come traditionally at, at the May board meeting and present and talk about all the successes we've had on the student level through activities and athletics in Yuma County, in the state and nationwide. In the virtual world we're still living, uh, we're, we're doing something exciting and new this year. We're gonna have Facebook premieres released uh, starting on June 2nd, uh, which is a couple weeks after graduation and the students and student government are working on each campus to pr produce their own Facebook premiere for what a day at, or what a year at Gila Ridge High School or what a year at Vista High School. And those premieres will be released starting on June 2nd with Gila Ridge and Vista on day one. June, I'm sorry, June, that's June 1st. June 2nd will be Cibola and San Luis. And then we're reserving one, one day for COFA on the third. And then the fourth we'll finish up with our um, first original school, Yuma High School. So be looking for that on social media and it's being produced by our students and it'll be wonderful and they have, um, they're gonna showcase all the wonderful things that were going on this year for their state and national um, qualifiers and placements. Thank you, Mr. Branza and thank you to you and the campuses as well as Mr. Patton for all the work that's going into that. Finally, 2.2.3, I am so proud and honored to have the um, high school, Yuma County High School Teacher of the Year in the house this evening. Uh, Mr. Tim Rebeck, um, it's been a, a pleasure to watch him grow and um, participate in this district on so many different levels as instructor, coach, student council advisor, mentor for other teachers. Um, even if he's not from here, he's, he's from here now. Um, he is a dynamic teacher to watch and I particularly enjoyed watching him as he coached his other uh, colleagues in an avid uh, strategy that was a virtual. Um, his principal, um, Mr. Arviso, co-principal Arviso is here also and I know wants to have a few moments but just really wanna acknowledge Tim Reback, how proud I am to have him in this district to work with and for him and also acknowledge his um, most valuable player who's also with him tonight, and that's his wife, uh, Sonia Rebeck. So thank you both for being here. And Tim, I know you're bashful, um, but if you don't mind uh, taking some time this evening, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, um, Ms. Thompson and, and board and Mr. Brianza and Ms. Anderson. Um, I wanna start off by, uh, I came in the same year around the time of Mr. Anderson and Mr. Fritz, and you know, they're now head principals. I kind of reevaluated my life decisions for a little bit, um, and then I won this award. <laughs> and I realized staying a teacher was very well worth it. I'm um, in all honesty, I, I love my profession. Um, I love this district. I love what I get to do. Um, I think in the community I could do it, and it is the best community at San Luis. Um, the person I really want to thank, like I said, is Sonia. I think anybody that knows her, her work ethic is unmatched. Um, she inspires me every day and she puts me to shame. Um, but I also want to thank, obviously, our administrators. Um, San Luis High School has five amazing administrators, um, Mr. Barrios and Mr. Arviso being here, but led by Mr. Arviso, if you know him, um, he preaches the family concept, he's really kind of brought us really close together, um, and our moniker is it's a great day to be a sidewinder, and honestly, with that award, I think I'm honoring all of our teachers, our administration, um, hopefully the district, and, and of course, it is a great way, or a great day to be a sidewinder. Thank you guys for your time, I greatly appreciate it.
Mr. Arvisa, were you were you wanting to try to top that? President Townsend, uh, board members, uh, Superintendent uh, Thompson, uh, Associate Superintendents. Well, I was going to introduce uh, Mr. Rebeck, but <laughs> I know Mr. Rebeck is shy, like Ms. Thompson said, so we're, we're kind of doing it a little backwards. But I just want to I just want to let you know, M Mr. Rebeck, he teaches AP Psychology, World History, uh, AVID class. He is our student council advisor. He coaches. He's on our AVID site team. And earlier this year, I asked him if he wanted to drive a bus in the morning. <laughs> and so he's actually thinking about that. Um, but he has great relationships with students, awesome relationships. He engages students in learning uh, to make it relevant. He challenges students to think and learn for themselves. And he just, just listening to him, he has a passion for teaching, a passion for what he does. And along with his contributions at San Luis High School, those are unsurpassed. And he's a, he's a pillar in our school. I know he's kind of modest sometimes, but, but he is truly a pillar at San Luis High School, and, and he deserves everything that he has. And, and again, congratulations. And, and, and Mr. Rebeck, thank you for letting me be your plus one at the banquet. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rebeck. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much and for those words, uh, Mr. Arviso. And also, just thank you to the Yuma County Education Foundation, Foundation of Yuma, Education Foundation of Yuma County, um, and the Rotary Clubs for all that they do to um, have this uh, award and uh, to support public education and education in Yuma County. Um, it's truly an exceptional um, district and county uh, award system, and it is looked at throughout the state as an exceptional evening. So someday we'll be back in person um, but I just think they did a phenomenal job um, with the virtual ceremony this year and special thanks to Arizona Western College and that team as well. So if you didn't get a chance to see the uh, entire thing, it is still on the Education Foundation website. And S President Townsend, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Moving on, uh, item 3.1. Budget update, overview of the 2020-2021 Yuma Union High School District internal budget, Mrs. Cordery. All right, good evening. First of all, let me say I appreciate it. I don't have to worry about turning on the microphone. That was a plus, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, so our budget tonight for our maintenance and operations budget, we have spent 65% of our budget through May 3rd. So we still have several months to go um, as our encumbrance period goes through July and August. So we have four more months of expenditures that will um, show up in this fiscal year. But we spent 65% of that uh, for a total of 52 million of an $80 million budget. In our capital, we have spent 1.1 million of our $12.5 million budget or a percentage of 9%. We still have um, about a million dollars worth of buses in there, you can see, um, that we're still waiting on. If you remember, oh my gosh, several months back, we were able to get some funding from that through a couple of different grants, and so we have that money set aside for those buses when they come in um, for to pay for our portion of that. And in addition, my favorite topic, and yours too, I'm sure, um, it is the ESSER grants and more specifically, DEMA. So we have now applied two more applications for our DEMA, um, totaling $382,000 more that we have in expenditures that we're trying to get them to reimburse us for. So that's a total of $879,000 that we are now waiting for DEMA and therefore FEMA to approve. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we see some of those funds. Um, we have our ESSER one that we're, our goal is to close that fund out by June 30th because remember we have three different ESSER grants that have come through now. Um, so the first one we hope to have closed out by June 30th of this year even though it ends on September 30th of 2022. We're just trying to use them in order for simplicity's sake instead of scattering all of our expenditures out. Um, and then we have our, so then we'll begin to use our ESSER two funds which is approximately $10 million. 
Um, and so we'll start working on those. Actually, we already have started working on using some of those funds. And then the final one so far will be SR3. We have not received an exact dollar amount on that yet. So we still are waiting to hear on that. Anything I can, any questions I can answer? Any board member questions? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Cordery. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, item 3.2, August 2021, return to learning in person, Mrs. Thompson. Thank you, President Townsend. It, um, we know that there are lots of questions about next school year, and uh, there are still some unknowns out there, but we do want to um, begin to communicate to our students and families um, what the current plan is for school year 2021. 22. So I'd like to turn uh, this agenda item over to Associate Superintendent Lisa Anderson. We are excited for the opening of the 21-22 school year and the Yuma Union High School District students and families will have two options for the new school year. Yuma Union will be returning to pre-COVID in-person full day instruction for students and families who select to remain virtual will have the opportunity to enroll in Yuma Union High School District's uh, Yuma Online Distance Academy, also known as Yoda. So the two options are in person, normal school day, normal school day, 745 to 245 and or enrolling in Yoda. Students who enroll in Yoda are still a member of their home campus. They're able to participate in extracurricular activities and athletics. School counselors have information for students and families that are interested in knowing more about Yoda. We will also be sending out additional information with regards to registration if families haven't registered yet or they have questions that will come from campuses that will also come from the district. Um, our website, we will be on, we've been on, thank you, all the radio stations and newspapers, uh, TV. We will continue to share that information as we get closer to August 5th, the first day of school. Um, you'll also see information about Yuma Online Distance Academy and, and what that is from a student perspective. So any questions that families or students may have if they reach out to their school counselor. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. I look forward to <laughs> us returning in August. Yes, Ms. Uh, Thompson. President Townsend and Governing Board, I wanted to just, um, you know, for the record, make sure that we understand this is an information item. Uh, this is our best information right now with our, our current county. Um, and I do reserve the right <laughs> as superintendent should there be uh, some other emergency involved with this pandemic or otherwise to bring this information back to the board. It's just very important to us that families know um, what our direction is so that they can also prepare as families to get ready to rejoin us uh, for the next school year. But we're going to remain positive that we're going to stay on track and this is going to be what I am how we open. Highly positive person still. Okay. Thank you very much. Moving on, uh, communications report. Uh, Ms. Thompson and Mr. Patton. Thank you very much again. And um, this is something that we've tried to do yearly. I know there's a, a lot of media, a lot of news, and um, sometimes some of our great things don't always get published. And um, we, we know that that's because there's a lot of news out there, especially um, this past year. But I would like to share with the governing board, um, the, especially with our um, definite interest and uh, blitzes, I would say, of communications and broadcasting and celebrating Yuma Union High School District, not just for information, but specifically about our teachers and our students' accomplishments. So Mr. Patton, uh, Chief Communications Officer, is here tonight to just give kind of a communications recap, and you have a hard copy on your table of the slide on the screen. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Um, Good evening, Governing Board and Ms. Bienza and the family. Um, my communications uh, department, um, if you will, includes myself as well as six communications liaisons. So 
Those are individuals who are either teachers or counselors in this case, and they're overseeing um, a large number of things for a pretty small stipend on their campus, um, which includes social media, website, and um, some of the other messaging and graphic design kind of elements that go on um, at their principal's request. Uh, so we work together in order to sort of maintain the websites, maintain social media. They, um, in addition to you know digital and in-person learning this year, were heaped with a lot more information than usual in terms of trying to get that out on social media for, for families. So that's, I think, very reflective in the first uh, top left corner of the graphic above. Uh, the social media across YUHSD, Facebook, um, between our seven main channels, again, six campuses, and the YUHSD Facebook page grew 21% over the last school year. Um, so we're at 28,000. I would venture to guess that if I went and looked, we'd be at 29,000 at this point. Um, we see weekly and daily growth in that area, and it is a, a very key messaging platform for us. Um, if you went and looked at all of the school's Facebook pages, you would see multiple messages every day um, and that's not just me, that's again our communications liaisons taking care of that for their campuses. But we've also seen growth in some other um, social platforms. Instagram has been a great way for us to share especially positive information, it's very visual. 39% um, growth in that and really we didn't make a commitment and effort and time to Instagram really more than the 2019-20 school year. So that's really been an investment and an effort from us to grow that. Um, YouTube as well, uh, again, we're broadcasting our live events um, like this meeting on YouTube for YUHSD. There's only one YouTube page. There's not a, um, a channel for other um, campuses at this point. Really, we direct everyone to the district's uh, YUHSD YouTube channel. And the only decline out of the four is Twitter, and I just feel like that for our community hasn't been a great source. They're not going there to get information about school. They're going there for news and sports and things like that, politics, whatever, but they're not going there for information about school. We, if you went and looked, we probably partner the same information on Facebook and Twitter, um, but the Twitter following, um, the number of likes and reactions and things like that just hasn't been nearly the same as the response on Facebook and Instagram. We're gonna stick with it because there are people using it, obviously 6,000 of them, but again, it, that's the reflection, I think, of what people are using the platform for as well as I think during election season, there were a large number of bots that had uh, subscribed <laughs> to a lot of our uh, Twitter feeds um, and those were wiped out in, a, in mass, I think after November and you can look at the numbers and see sort of a decline um, in the number of followers we had really from after the election to now. Um, as far as the top right corner, our website data, uh, it has grown every single year since we, uh, since I've been in this role, this is my fourth year. Uh, we revamped our websites and rolled those out in January of 2018. Um, and since then, it has continuously grown. Um, I was gonna share comparative data the last year. Uh, the only reason I didn't is because we haven't included the full month of May. And so it'd give kind of an incomplete picture, especially with the number of traffic that we get on our website for graduation and things like that. But 518,000 site visits. We average almost 1,000 visits to our site per day for just the Yuma Union website, and that's an average, um, but that's the cumulative for all seven of our websites. And within those page or site visits, 528,000 page views. And again, that's probably up another two or 3,000 right now um, from when I made this graphic. Uh, it's, it's just continuously been a place and a source of information I feel really confident directing someone to the Yuma Union website for the most up-to-date information um, and visuals and good news, a lot of positive things, events going on on the calendar, on the homepage. Really, I think that as, uh, if you're going to the Yuma Union website, you could get almost everything that you need just on the homepage. Um, and then if you find something that you need more information on, you click through it. But if you're looking for a date, you're looking for a phone number, you're looking for crucial information, it's all right there. Um, keep going clockwise to the miscellaneous data on the chart. Now those are just some things I found really interesting when I was digging up some stuff for this report. Um, since April 1st, so a month and a half, we've had 14,000 minutes of our videos played on Facebook. And that's just Yuma Union. I didn't bring in all the other schools. So it's just one Facebook page, 14,000 minutes worth of video play. We've also reached almost 100,000 people in that same amount of time. 
And some of that's through paid ad campaigns, but I think it's also organic as well. I think when I looked and broke that number down, about 37% of it was from paid campaigns. The rest was all organic. So people are going to our Facebook page. They're going to our website for our information. And then the last one, and this is probably the thing I'm most proud of and I'm most proud of the liaisons for because they contribute a great deal to this. We sent out 105 press releases since July 1st. We have not had nearly the number of events going on. We haven't had nearly the number of positive stories to share. That's down like three times from where it used to be. We were over 300 the last two years because we have so many amazing things going on to share. But we still, in our, and again, when I say we, I mean myself and the other liaisons, all found ways to still highlight positive achievement in the district over the last year. Um, and I felt it was important to note that it was during a pandemic, we still got over 100 press releases out. Um, and finally, we mentioned the hiring ad campaigns. Um, we made an investment in Facebook and Spotify specifically for our hiring, um, filming 30 second spots, for example, of videos of teachers giving feedback into their experience working for the district. Um, and then also just sharing small graphics or uh, link directly to our job um, postings online. And for example, on Facebook, we've ran five advertorial spots across Arizona and a few other states. Um, it's actually up to seven um, after today uh, because we've ran a couple new ones with video. But out of those, we've had 3,419 3, clicks directly to our job listing. So we're not saying they're clicking to our website, they're actually going and looking at the jobs available. Um, we're working with HR to see how that's translating to applications being filled out or completed or ultimately hiring people. Um, and same thing for Spotify, again, a 30 second spot on the uh, platform if you're listening to music, you'll get interrupted by an advertisement in Arizona about Yuma Union and then we did another one um, in some states in the Midwest and other parts of the country. Um, only two spots and 275 click-throughs. And if you think about it, those are almost more impressive than the Facebook one because that's somebody who was doing something, listening to music, heard the ad, stopped what they were doing to go click and find out more about the jobs. And again, that's directly to the job listing. Um, so I, I'm really proud of what we've accomplished um, this school year from a communications and media relations standpoint and just want to keep doing more and more of it. So. That concludes what I wanted to share with everybody. Is there any questions? Any questions for Ms. I just want to find out how come you didn't add TikTok. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that's next. <laughs> Stay tuned in August. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Okay, moving on, call to the public. Any person wishing to speak may present the information at this time only. All presentations are limited to a maximum of three minutes and a maximum of 15 minutes on each subject. Before you begin to speak, please identify yourself by clearly stating for the record your name. Comments by members of the Governing Board in response to any public comment will be limited to asking staff to review the matter or requesting rescheduling of the matter for further consideration at a later date. Do we have anyone that would like to address the Board? I see none, so we'll move on. Consent items, adoption of items of routine nature and those that normally do not require deliberations on the part of the governing board. A board member may pull items which will be discussed and voted on separately. There is one correction to item 5.2, number 247. The start date should be 525, not 61. Is there a motion on the consent items? the consent items with the adjustment to 5.2247. The date should read 525. A second. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Mr. Gonzalez, to approve the consent items as presented with the change of um, item 5.2, number 247. The start date should be 525. Is there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. I'll raise your hand or and say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Going to action items. Uh, item 6.1, consideration to accept donations. I'll read the donations that are listed. To Gila Ridge High School, Mr. Justin Hale, 4th Avenue Gym. 
donated $5,000 worth of gym and training equipment to the Gila Ridge High School Athletics Department. All the equipment will be available for all sports teams and physical training classes. Also at Gila Ridge, Home Plate Baseball Booster Club donated batting cages to Gila Ridge High School to be used on the lower level west fields. The estimated value of their donation is $2,500. To Kofa High School, Mr. Gabe Ortiz donated 10 bags of MVP Turfus topsoil to the Kofa High School baseball program. The estimated value of the donation is $130. To the Yuma Union High School District Office, Mr. Dan Nedifer, I hope I pronounced that correctly, donated two psychological test kits to the Yuma Union High School District Special Education School psychologist. Estimated value of the donation is $1,000. It is recommended that the governing board accept the above listed donations. Is there a motion? So moved. Second with gratitude. Motion made by Mr. Gonzalez and seconded with gratitude by Ms. Mellon. Uh, is there any questions or discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 6.2, consideration to approve continued face coverings for the 2020-21 school year. It is recommended that the governing board approve Superintendent Thompson's recommendation. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Mr. Lara, to approve Superintendent Thompson's recommendation. Ms. Thompson, would you like to add anything to what was in our packet? Or um, thank you, President Townsend, Governing Board members. Uh, th this action is specific for um, starting May 24th. We are excited to be approaching our graduation ceremony and uh, deeply thankful for all of our students who have been amazing and following all of our protocols as well as our staff and faculty who have um, gone to great lengths to make sure that all of our mitigation strategies have been practiced. I'd also like to publicly thank our safety officer Ryan Quick for all of her work and always being available. Um, we would like to present this as part of our summer work and summer learning option as we begin to um, explore what life will be like uh, potentially without face masks after COVID-19. And um, in, the, in the actual item, it's pretty general in, con in the description, but as usual, the team has um, come together. Mr. Patton and Ms. Ms. Quick have worked together to have very uh, specific directions for campuses should the board um, support my recommendation. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote uh, to approve Superintendent Thomas Thompson's recommendation. All in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries aye. unanimously. Item 6.3. Consideration to approve intergovernmental agreement with Arizona Western College for du dual credit. It is recommended that the governing board approve the renewal of the intergovernmental agreement with Arizona Western College for the purpose of offering dual credit coursework to our district students. Is there a motion? I move that we, the governing board, approve the renewal of the intergovernmental agreement with Arizona Western College to for the purpose of offering dual credit coursework to our district students. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Mr. Lara, to approve the renewal of the intergovernmental agreement with Arizona Western College for the purpose of offering dual credit coursework to our district students. Mrs. Thompson, Mr. Brianza, would you like to discuss this a little more? I will say how fortunate we are to have the premier partnership with Arizona Western College and then turn the mic over to Mr. Brianza. I was going to say the exact same thing, but um, Beat you to I will it this echo time. that. Uh, th this is really a continuation, a renewal of the partnership and the opportunity for our students to take classes on our campuses with our instructors, but yet earn um, Arizona Western College credit and high school credit at the same time. And um, we have plenty of data to show that it's been successful, and we're always looking at avenues to increase the number of offerings on our campus. So um, 
if there's any questions, maybe I can help address them. President Townsend, I'd also just like to again thank the leadership of Dr. Daniel Kaur at Arizona Western College as president and his board uh, for their leadership in both Yuma County and La Paz County. Is there any further discussion or questions by the board? Okay, hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye and raise your right hand. Aye. Or raise your hand, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I was thinking I was a judge there for a minute. <laughs> Moving on, consideration to approve the revised replacement fees for equipment uniforms, item 6.4. It is recommended the governing board approve the revised replacement fees for equipment and uniforms. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Gonzalez, second by Ms. Mellon, to approve the revised replacement fees for equipment uniforms. Ms. Thompson, Mr. Branza, would you like to add anything to this? I wish I knew what he was going to say, and I would say it first, but Mr. <laughs> Branza. <laughs> um, we have an amazing group of equipment managers on our campuses. We have an amazing group of assistant principals in charge of athletics, and our campus bookstore managers. All three of them have to orchestrate and um, collaborate in order to make sure equipment's checked out, checked in, and then if there's anything damaged or missing, making sure that um, students are assessed for that damage or missing equipment, and also at the same time, then a be able to order and purchase new ones for the following years or year, so the next group of students can have the same safe equipment or uniforms to compete in. Uh, our athletic directors took a look at um, the fees and what how they were ordered and what the costs were. I did not get into the weeds with them, but um, they've come up with what what it actually cost in 2020 and 2021 to order replacement cost of uniforms. I do have uh, Mr. Barrios, if you wanna come up to the podium, um, if there's any questions on how they actually researched it, but he's here to help um, the athletic director from San Luis. Good evening, President Townsend, board members, Superintendent Thompson, Associate Superintendent Brianza, Associate Superintendent Anderson. So the athletic directors, we got together and uh, we reached out to the vendors and uh, we, we got their input when considering these modifications. And there are several factors that contributed to these changes. So uh, when we order singleton items, we don't get the bulk price, bulk or group pricing that we normally get. Uh, another factor would be that the uniforms are like two or three years in catalog. So and if we try to order something that's that we ordered three years ago, four years ago, then uh, the vendor doesn't have it, so they have to outsource, and that increases the pricing as well. And then also just shipping and handling costs. So that, that's what contributed to the increase in pricing. If you take a look at some of the items that are on the list that are crossed off or added on there, so that's just to keep up to the sporting needs for example, if we have a, uh, we all have girls wrestling now, so uh, we wanna make sure that they have the uh, compression shirt that is required for them to compete. So that was added onto the list. Uh, any other questions for me? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Any further discussion or questions? Mr. Brinson, do you have anything else? I, I just wanna point out and it, not everything went up in price. Um, we did make reductions in some of the prices of items mm -hmm. um, because that was reflective of the current pricing. So uh, there were some increases, but there was also some decreases as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further if, discussion. If there's a family that is in some kind of like a financial pickle and they have to come up with the money for a, a uniform, is it a, a payment plan or is there any way they can? Y absolutely, w there there are some funds out there that can help in, in that respect, and I don't know of any family that the campuses have not worked with, and um, e every student's taken into account. So yes, there, there are payment plans, there's other funds available to help cover that if needed. Thank you. Any other questions? None, we'll proceed to vote. Uh, the motion is to approve the revised replacement fees for equipment and uniforms. All in favor, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries <coughs> unanimously. 
Okay, 6.5, consideration to approve the revised 2021-2022 compensation package. It is recommended that the governing board approve the revised compensation packet for the 2021-22 fiscal year that removes the April 1st requirement to receive the compensation increase. Is there a motion? I move that we, the governing board, approve the revised compensation packet for the 2021-2022 fiscal year that removes the April 1st requirement to receive the compensation increase. I second that. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Mr. Gonzalez, to approve the revised compensation packet for the 2021-2022 fiscal year that removes the April 1st requirement to receive the compensation increase. Ms. Thompson, do you have anything? Thank you, President Townsend, and thanks for all of her work. Uh, we've had CFO Cordery go to the microphone <laughs> and share with us. <laughs> she thanks. Um, so for many years, we had the April 1st deadline in place, and the reason for that was that we didn't, the thought was at that point that it wasn't fair for an employee to be hired at the end of the fiscal year and then get the same raise that somebody that's worked continuously throughout the year, they would receive that same raise. So that's why the April 1st deadline came in to play. And then somewhere along the line, our board said that um, they wanted to make sure that any employee, any new employee coming in with the same experience of an employee currently working for us didn't come in and make more money. So our current employee would always be making the same or more money than the new employee that, were, that came in. So as we now are able to be in a position where we give raises and we're also building up that entry level, it becomes more difficult because if you're hired, let's say the end of April, you don't get the raise, but we also are increasing the base salary. So it makes things a little complicated and so you lose your years of experience that you came in with. So we are um, no longer seeing a need for that April 1st deadline. We would like to be able to offer employees the raise so that will put them, when they're hired at the end of April, they'll be able to come into the next fiscal year making just a little bit more because of when they were hired. So that's the reason for removing the April 1st deadline in that request. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, the motion is to approve the revised compensation packet for the 2021-2022 fiscal year that removes the April 1st requirement to receive the compensation increase. All in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 6.6, .6, consideration to establish a lost textbook or novel fee. It is recommended the governing board set a lost novel fee of $10 and lost textbook fee of $50. Is there a motion? I move that we, the governing board, set a, a lost novel fee of $10 and a lost textbook fee of $50. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Mr. Lada, to set a lost novel fee of $10 and a lost textbook fee of $50. Ms. Thompson. Um, I, I feel the background was sufficient, but if any board member has a question about this. Any questions? Okay. With that, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Item 6.7, consideration to approve list of hard to staff positions for school year 2021-22 for the referral payment program. It is recommended the governing board approve the 2021-22 list of hard to staff positions eligible for the referral payment program. Is there a motion? Make the motion that we, the governing board, uh, approve the 2021 21 22 list of hard pos staff positions eligible for the referral payment program. Second. Motion made by Mr. Lada, seconded by Ms. Mellon, to approve the 2021 22 list of hard to staff positions eligible for the referral payment program. Ms. Thompson, anything you'd like to add? If you look in your packet, the list is still extensive. Um, I think that's probably true ac across Arizona, if not the United States, as we look for uh, highly qualified individuals to teach our students. That is still our main goal in hiring. 
and um, we're pleased to be able to continue the teacher referral uh, program for, a cur for current staff members who also help us in our attraction and recruitment um, hiring process. So um, the, this is a necessary action in order to continue uh, that process. Is there any questions or comments, discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Going on to item 6.8, consideration to adopt the resolution to reduce academic square footage for reporting to the school facilities board. Oops. Okay, it is recommended the governing board adopt the resolution to reduce classroom square footage for reporting to the Arizona School Facilities Board. Is there a motion? I move that we, the Aye. governing board, adopt the resolution to reduce classroom square footage for Aye. reporting Aye. to the Arizona School Facilities Board. We need a motion before we can discuss what's on the floor. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Mr. Lotta. Okay, Ms. Thompson, and then we'll open it to discussion. Thank you, and I'm gonna ask uh, Jay Munoz to come forward to the microphone, our Executive Director of Facilities Management, and uh, talk a little bit about the process and then make sure that we answer any questions that you may have. Good evening. So the district worked with um, ca campus administrators to accurately uh, uh, identify our campus space. So the results of this review determined that uh, across three district campuses, COFA, San Luis High School and Yuma High School, there's a total of 23,508 square feet of space that's not being used by students. Um, this space includes classrooms that are vacant and not being used by, by students, um, buildings that no longer exist at campuses, and a space used for district storage. So that's what the determined. Questions? M Mr. Gonzalez, you had a question? I was just gonna ask, is this in any way help us on funding for the Summerton High School at all? So the main purpose, of course, is to adequately report the use of space. Um, and a byproduct of that is looking at how much square footage is being used for the number of students that we have. And it potentially can um, support that. So as SFB uses our square footage per student as one of the criteria for awarding. Correct. Yes. And so we, ha we uh, again, look to ad you know, use our facilities in the wisest manner possible and, and report that in an adequate manner. Um, and it took a lot of work on the part of the principals and every campus to really go through and analyze that space. So um, we will, should, should the board support this, uh, resolution, then we will um, report our findings at, a, at the school facility board level. Anything else for Mr. Munoz or Ms. Thompson? Thank you, Mr. Munoz. Okay, <laughs> the uh, motion is to adopt the resolution to re reduce classroom square footage for reporting to the Arizona School Facilities Board. All in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 6.9, consideration to temporarily suspend board policy BGB as permitted by board policy BGF for the purpose of addressing agenda item 6.1. 6.3. Sorry. It is recommended the governing board move to suspend governing board policy BGB related to a first and second reading regarding policy adoption for the discussion and consideration of agenda action item 6.10 of this board agenda dated May 12, 2021. Is there a motion? I move that we, the governing board, move to suspend governing board policy BGB related to a first and second reading regarding policy adoption for the discussion and consideration of agenda action, action item 6.10 of the board agenda dated May 12, 2021. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Mr. Lotta, to suspend governing board policy BGB related to a first and second reading regarding policy adoption for the discussion and consideration of agenda action item 6.10 of this board agenda dated May 12, 2021. Ms. Thompson, would you like to 
further expand upon this? Uh, thank you, President Townsend, Governing Board. This is necessary, especially considering the fact that next week is graduation. <laughs> and the next agenda item uh, for adoption of policy IKFB um, in relationship to, to commencement ceremony exercises, um, we would like to pass this in one meeting uh, since graduation is next week. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 6.10, consideration to adopt policy IKFB graduation exercises. It is recommended that the governing board adopt policy IKFB as presented. You've read it, or you should have read it. Uh, is there a motion? I move that we, the Governing Board, adopt policy IKFB as presented. Second. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Ms. Gon Mr. Gonzalez, that the, to adopt policy IKFB as presented. Ms. Thompson, would you like to further explain this? I would like to turn this over to Mr. Brianza, who has been doing the work with this item. Didn't want to say what he was going to say first. I do, but again, okay. I, 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 sh I have to get a script from now on <laughs> so I can preempt him. Uh, thank you. Um, it's a very exciting time coming up in, in, in May when we have graduation ceremonies and a recent um, bill that was signed by the governor um, made it so that any, regis any registered uh, Indian tribe, any student who was affiliated with them could wear um, culturally significant regalia or items on for graduation, whether it was on their mortarboard or on their gown, some shape or form. And th these are this is recommended um, that all campuses and our district would allow um, because we have to now but it's also the right thing to do as well as the third bullet there we've added as well any student may wear regalia of culture significance at the graduation ceremony because we're also getting recommendation that an anything of culture significant to any student is important to wear um, for them to celebrate their achievement any questions okay hearing none thank you Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, next item is a discussion and possible action. Governing board response regarding ASBA statement. Um, Ms. Thompson, you wanna lead off and, and with a discussion, then I'll add my two cents. Yes, this is per board member request in regards to um, a statement through ASBA, uh, uh, specifically by uh, Chris Cotterman, um, in regards to Governor Ducey's rescinding the mask mandate on April 19th. We do understand that this is a, a passionate time for, for many people. <coughs> and there was a, a board member request um, to look at another school district, um, Maricopa Unified School District, their governing board has issued a, a statement, very professional statement, um, that um, we would that a board member has asked us to consider supporting. Okay. I'm the board member that asked. Um, <coughs> what, what? There's been a couple of instances recently, and there's been several instances over the last few years, where ASBA, of which we're a member, has issued statements um, representing school districts across the state. Um, recently, there were a couple that were rather um, harsh and partisan uh, about some things that the, the legislature had passed or the governor had uh, done that um, whether you agreed with them or not, I felt were just very inappropriate uh, and to make a blanket statement that they represented all school districts without any of us ever being consulted, especially in a time when the legislature is still in session, we have very sensitive bills still in the legislature pending, and we have a budget with the budget regarding school funding still to be done and to be bombastic uh, and um, uh, towards members of the legislature or the governor that are still critical was just not appropriate. We can make our point without being bombastic and without being loud. And I think that uh, this letter that was prepared 
uh, by the uh, some people at the Maricopa Unified School District, which they have not passed that yet. It is on their agenda for tonight. Um, I was thinking that we could uh, do something appropriately similar uh, without being overly heavy-handed, but just send a message to SBA that you know we would like them to tone down some of their rhetoric and be a little more uh, be a little less volatile and, and hostile in some of their rhetoric because we do have to deal with the legislature, we do have to deal with the governor, and uh, um, you know on all of these issues still. So that was why I asked that this be on here. Um, I think the letter that uh, Maricopa has presented uh, is very appropriate, very mild, n not uh, overly dramatic, but makes it clear that uh, they would like a little more consideration before anything went out representing school boards from across the state. I actually agree with you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, David. Do we got that down? <laughs> That's recorded. It doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, can we add? Um, yes, th we're up for comment, and then if there's somebody wants to make a motion. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was reading this and reading, you know, getting the updates from ASBA. I agree. I feel like it's already such a volatile time, and and in the aggressiveness of the statements, and that it Arizona School Board Association is not speaking for all governing boards. And so I, I think that I really liked the letter that the governing board of Am Maricopa Unified School District um, sent. It was, um, it, was, it, was, it was not harsh, but it was just letting ASBA know that um, they do not speak for all governing boards. And like, like President Townsend said, we really need to be able to work, you know, to promote education, promote education funding, and um, that's, it's, it's about our students, not about a, an opinion. And when we can get into those waters, we can lose sight of what's really important. So if anybody else wants to add or I can make a motion. Anybody else want to add anything? Do you want to make a motion? Okay. <laughs> I move that we, the governing board, um, draft a letter uh, to Arizona School Board Association um, to reflect our concern on the rhetoric um, that is being shared by ASBA. Please. That's a motion. Okay. Motion made by Ms. Mellon and seconded by Mr. Lara. I can't repeat it word for word, but <laughs> Whatever I said. how Ms. Mellon repeated uh, stated it. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, next meeting of the board is Wednesday, June 9th, right here, 515. And with that, is there a motion to adjourn? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We are adjourned. Mr. Lara did as usual, nay, he wants to stay here tonight. Thank you all for coming.